Quick little update. If you are interested in joining the Breakup with Booze Challenge, that is going to be February 20th through the 24th. So those are the new upcoming current dates for this amazing transformative challenge that we're going to talk about. Uh, It's February 20th through the 24th, and you'll be able to log in and register at breakup.vibewithstephanie.com. Have you ever had a god-awful boyfriend that everybody warned you about, you knew he was bad for you, you knew it the minute you laid eyes on him, but you decided to go for it anyway, and you ended up in a relationship that was either abusive or just plain awful? Yeah, most of us have done that. I wanted to talk today about the five red flags that it's time to break up with the booze. I have been through so many breakups, and most of them have been alcohol-related. I have been told numerous times that if I would just quit drinking, I would be the perfect girlfriend, but I could never quit. I kept going back to alcohol time and time again, and it has cost me so many relationships. Obviously, they weren't meant to be to begin with, but I just want to offer some help to those of us who know that we are in a bad relationship with alcohol, but can't seem to get out. We've seen the red flags. We've felt it. We know it's time to let go, but something keeps drawing us back in. So today let's talk about the five red flags that it's time to break up with booze. Okay. So in this instance, when you hear me saying him, we are talking about alcohol, but I'm going to put it like we're talking about a breakup because it's it's a lot of the same thing. And some breakups can be brutal because we didn't expect it. Maybe we knew that it was a bad relationship. We wanted to get out. We didn't know how. And then the guy broke up with us and you're left shocked. And that was so unexpected and you're devastated. I've done that numerous times. So when I talk about him, we're going to be talking about alcohol, but I want you to be able to switch them back and forth because I am going to prepare you for a breakup so that you are not surprised or taken by surprise. So number one red flag that your relationship is toxic is that you don't like who you are around him. You don't like who you are around alcohol. He says it's going to be different next time, but it's more of the same, more guilt, more shame. So in the beginning, when we all start drinking, it's fun. It takes the edge off. It makes us feel like we're somebody else and we feel great, right? But eventually you don't like who you are when you're in the presence of alcohol. You become somebody else. You say things you don't mean. You send a text that you didn't mean to or didn't want to. You always think it's going to be different next time, but it's not. So that's one red flag is that you just don't like who you are anymore when you're drinking. Number two, when you see that alcohol is preventing you from working on yourself, when alcohol is around, when he's around, you're not working out as much, you're not journaling or practicing any kind of self-care at all for yourself. And haven't we had relationships like that where you put yourself on the back burner because you're too busy taking care of this toxic relationship? So that's number two. Alcohol doesn't like when we are doing good things for ourselves. It wants us to be fully committed to it, to drinking. So keep an eye out when you can tell that your motivation to work out or to get up early or to do things for yourself goes by the wayside. And that includes hygiene. I have so many women telling me, and I had never heard this before. I thought it in my own back of my mind, but I never heard somebody else say it until I started this podcast and started helping other women that even our hygiene is going down the drain. Forget self-care. We're not taking showers enough. We weren't brushing our teeth enough. We weren't flossing, taking our makeup off. I mean, it was getting bad. And this is not like end stage alcoholism either. This is just a point that you are going to get to if you're drinking too much alcohol or if it starts to show up as a toxic relationship. So keep an eye out for that. Number three, your self-esteem is lower from being with him. So many promises get broken, especially to yourself when he is around. Have you ever had a relationship This could be with a a friend, girl too, a girlfriend, 
where you just feel like crap when they're around. Like you don't ever feel good enough. You feel like you're lacking something. You could be feeling great hanging out with yourself. And then as soon as you're in their presence, you don't feel worthy. You feel crappy. That's happened to me in friend relationships as well as boyfriend relationships. But when your self-esteem starts getting lower, when you're drinking, that's a toxic relationship. And I remember thinking as I was drinking towards the end there that I can't stop drinking. What is wrong with me? How gross am I that I can't quit drinking? Every time I picked up a bottle of wine at the grocery store and a pack of cigarettes, I would just feel so gross. And every time I couldn't stop myself from taking a drink, it really affected my self-esteem. So when your self-esteem starts getting lower and you're breaking all these promises to yourself, that's a big red flag. When you start telling yourself that you're going to moderate, Oh, somebody just texted me the other day. I said, how are you? And she said, I'm in the only two Chardonnays a day stage or in the I'll only drink before 9 p.m. stage. So when you're in that moderation stage and negotiation with yourself and you keep breaking those promises, your self-esteem is going to be shot. And once you get a shot self-esteem, it is hard. It is much harder to pull yourself out of that and say, listen, I'm going to stick up for myself from now on. I'm breaking up with the booze. It's harder because you don't trust yourself because you've already broken a lot of promises. So keep an eye out with that low self-esteem. You're starting to feel bad. You can come back from that. I want you to hear that. When you start feeling like you are so far deep that you can't get out, you still can get out, I promise. I was there. Number four, alcohol lies to you all the time. He tells you that you're funny when you're drinking. He tells you that everyone's drinking the same amount as you. He tells you that you were fine last night, don't worry. You probably weren't fine. If you have to question it, Or if you do question it and a friend tells you, oh, yeah, you were fine. You were fine. You were fine. You probably weren't fine. If you have to question it, you probably weren't fine. Your soul knows. My soul always knew. But I would wake up and I'm a different person than I was when I was drinking. So I would wake up, wipe it right under the rug like it never happened and just prayed. Prayed. It didn't happen. Meanwhile, there's all the people that were with me the night before walking around thinking, ugh, Man, that was embarrassing. But alcohol and your hangover is going to convince you that it was fine. You didn't do anything wrong. I feel like a lot of this goes back to being the devil. And I'm never going to shove religion down your throat. I don't even know enough about it. I'm newly Christian. So I, I would never shove it down your throat. But it does always make me feel like some of the things... When I talk about he and he lies to you and he lowers your self-esteem and he doesn't like when you work on yourself and you don't like who you are when he's around, doesn't that feel like that's kind of the devil? And then that makes me think about why do they call alcohol spirits? Because something different comes out of you when you're drinking. Spirits, the devil. Either way, it ain't good and we got to break up with booze, right? We've got to let this thing go because he is not good for us. So if you have a feeling that you weren't fine, you probably weren't. I know that we're not funnier when we're drinking. You know what one awesome thing that I lost that I couldn't stand about myself is that I had self-depreciating humor. I thought it was humor. And I was always talking negatively about myself out loud to make somebody laugh, but it was really making somebody uncomfortable. It was disgusting. And I did it time and time again, and I couldn't even stop myself. That is another example. That felt like the devil. Why am I involuntarily talking badly about myself? You know, and I don't do that anymore. I don't even accidentally do it. I don't catch myself doing it. I don't regret. There's nothing like that that happens to me anymore because I'm not drinking. There is no devil. There is no, well, there might still be. I don't know. I'm not perfect, obviously, but there is no spirit inside my brain and my chemistry. And I am no longer self depreciating, which is a big one. That lowered my self esteem so much, but I couldn't stop it. It was ridiculous. Man, I haven't said that out loud ever. I have never said that out loud. And I just, it just felt like a weight coming off. I don't even know if I knew how to say it, but that part of me is gone. 
you will not hear me talking bad about myself. And that only changed when I stopped drinking. Okay, and number five. You tell alcohol, you tell him that you are done over and over again. You tell him always, we're done. I'm not drinking this again. I'm not coming back to you ever again. But you always go back. And your friends can't believe it. (laughs) They're like, I can't believe she's back doing this again. I can't believe she's back with him again. She said she was done. Have you ever done that? You like blow the guy's spot up and say, oh, he did this. He did that. He's been doing this the whole time. Then you're done. Like you can't go back and you go back and they are bewildered. They can't believe you went back. They can't believe you're doing this to yourself again. Yeah, I've done that a bunch of times and it's gross and it affects your self-esteem. Once again, it shows alcohol who's boss. Joke's on you. It's in control. So to keep saying that you're going to be done with alcohol and then to keep going back, it's just, it's bad all around. It's bad for you. It's bad for your insides. Your friends are annoyed. Your family's getting annoyed. No one trusts you. You don't trust you. So you have to make up your mind and call it quits. It has to be a decision that you make and that you stick to. One really fun thing and a great way that you can ditch this terrible relationship with alcohol. I created this thing called Break Up With Booze Challenge. It's free. It's a four-day challenge. And we are going to do challenges and things that are going to help you ditch this relationship and get ready for your sober journey. A lot of people try to jump into a sober journey without being prepared without going through some steps that are important, especially if you're going to be the one doing the breakup, you want to be in the catbird seat. You want to be in control and take the necessary steps. So like, I feel like a lot of times when guys break up, they have already planned it. They've got their steps prepared. They've probably even got their eye on somebody else. Most guys don't break up with people unless they've got somebody else in my experience. So they have a plan. And then I'm always like, Oh my God, I'm by myself. What happened? I'm shocked. And I'm by myself. And I have no clue what to do next. I want to be the one to be prepared and have the steps. So I want to prepare you to do the same. So day one, we're going to do red flags, what to look for, we're going to do self discovery and research. So we're going to write list, we're gonna, we are going to do all of this inner work on day one. Day two, we're going to visualize your life with and without it, which is hugely important because a lot of people haul off and say, I'm done drinking. And then they have no idea what to expect. They have never visualized their life without it. So terror sets in. They never visualize what their life will look like if they keep on going, which is even more terrifying. And day three is closing the door preparing and getting rid of all the signs and the triggers and the things that are going to pop up. We're going to close the door, which is almost like blocking and deleting this person, right? Like it's, we are going to close the door and I'm going to show you all the steps to do that. And day four is getting ready for your journey getting ready. We're going to start the journey of sobriety. So you're going to know how to prepare for that. We are going to get your health on track. We are going to prepare. And these are things that I think are necessary in order to start your journey. Because a lot of people, like I said, you start and you're like, "Uh oh, no, I didn't sign up for all this. Well, it's because you didn't know what to expect. So when you know, when you're in control, it's going to have a far better outcome for your actual sober journey. Even if you're only going to be sober for 30 days, a lot of people can't make it past three days, past 15 days. Even people that don't consider themselves to be alcoholics can't make it any length of time without drinking. They can't get to the next weekend or the next wedding. You've got to have a system in place. And I happen to have that system because number one, I'm a breakup expert. Number two, I'm a sobriety expert. I'm so proud to say that. I could have never said that almost a year ago because I didn't trust myself. I had no measure of myself. And now I can honestly say that I have what it takes to get and stay sober. And I can teach that to you. So this breakup with booze is free. It's a four day challenge. There's going to be prizes. There's going to be a lot of fun. I know I sound serious about the matter, but I'm going to make it very fun and challenging. And you're going to have a private group that you can 
hang out with and run ideas by and talk about this breakup with. And it'll be a lot of fun. So the first one starts October 3rd through the 6th. And you can sign up on my website, vibewithstephanie.com. You'll see the breakup button there. And I'll also put the link to directly sign up below this podcast. And I hope you do it. You're going to gain a lot of knowledge. And there is no pressure to quit, to quit forever, to even stop tomorrow. There's no pressure, but you should have the knowledge so that when you're ready, it's ready for you. I'm super excited for you to get rid of this toxic relationship with alcohol. And I am here for you the entire time. I'll see you inside the Breakup with Booze Challenge, October 3rd. Don't forget the new dates are February 20th through the 24th for Breakup with Booze. You can sign up at breakup.vibewithstephanie.com and I can't wait to see you there.